if you guys are watching this a day from the, the everyone, it's Jason from GameRave.com, otherwise known as Danger Boy, and this is GameRave TV. Uh, first of all, happy holidays. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. I had an amazing one. Now, the first game we're going to talk about today is Click the DNA Imperative. Um, if you never had a PlayStation 1, during the time frame this game came out in Japan, um, those guys were going crazy with uh, corridor first-person shooters. The catch being, instead of being some gung-ho American character with a BF fucking G, um, you were a mech pilot. Um, there were games like on the Saturday you had Robotica, PlayStation had Belt Logger, uh, Clique, uh, Sequel Epidemic, um, Spacecraft from BF9, a whole bunch of other guys and so oh. forth. And while it more or less took off in Japan, uh, here in America we really weren't catching on the idea. Um, if you've never seen it before, basically imagine a first person shooter but you're inside a robot, for lack of a better term. And what made the games thematic is that you were always in the most dreary, drabbest, underground, or a, you know, in space, space station. And while the games tried their best to be cool, most of them had the same problem. You were basically looking at the same five textures on the wall with enemies that made no sense whatsoever in the context of the game storyline. With Kilik, its biggest problem is that all the levels were bland. Very bland. I've tried playing through this game about three or four times, and I think the first I got was like the fourth level. And then there's only so many times you can look at a red cross and a metal square until you just want to blow something up. Um, even weirder is the designs of the enemies don't match up to what the story is talking about. Um, most of the drones and bad guys look like trash compactors with an eyeball on them or uh, like a one propeller drone. Those aren't scary. Those, those look like things I could buy at Ikea and, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, for you guys, the fellow developers, uh, Genki really struggled early on. Um, they tried everything from OGP racing games to uh, mech corridor shooters. Uh, they eventually found a foothold with Shakoto Battle. Uh, it was a racing game series that started early on and eventually got uh, brought over to the uh, Saturn uh, as Wangan Heat Battle, which we got as Highway 3000. Where have I heard that game before? <laughs> Shikoto Bell was also brought over to the Dreamcast as Tokyo Extreme Racing, uh, which carried forward into the PlayStation 2. Uh, they also did the Virtual Fire 3 port for the Dreamcast. Our other game we're going to talk about is ESPN Extreme Games. Now, for our younger viewers, or even our older ones who never played them, on the Super Nintendo and Genesis, there was a game series called Road Rash. It was basically just a straightforward racing game where you got to punch and kick people off motorcycles and be a general badass. Uh, Sony decided to go for a more family-friendly option, and with ESPN Extreme Games, uh, basically released a game that was essentially Road Rash, but instead of motorcycles, you were on inline skates and bicycles and ground skateboard Plinking things, wherever they are. I have no idea. I don't care about sports. No, seriously, I don't care about sports. Now, unlike Killyk, uh, one ESPN Extreme Games actually did pretty well for itself. Um, once the ESPN license wore off, uh, Sony changed the name to One Extreme and released two sequels down the road, Two Extreme and Three Extreme. How unique in naming schemes. While the original game was very popular and Two Extreme did pretty well for itself, um, the game was a victim of its own subject matter. Um, while extreme sports were all the rage in the mid-90s to early 2000, um, by the time the PlayStation 2 had started getting its foothold, no one really cared. Um, if you go back to the PlayStation library, you can see like all the crazy scooter, uh, racing scooter games, trick scooter games, uh, inline skating, stuff like that. And by about 2003, no one really cared anymore. And uh, the two game series, Kalik and ESPN Extreme Games, uh, actually only exist on the PlayStation. They basically were born and killed off in a 10-year cycle. Um, it's kind of depressing. Now, as far as collectability goes, um, basically all five games are... They're not worthless, um, but you can have them for pennies on the dollar. Um, if you're a complete OCD collector like I am, uh, you do have to pay attention to Kalik and Epidemic, though. Uh, both games came with a little memory card sticker sheet. Um, that had like the game's name on it for the front and top of your memory cards. Um, with ESPN Extreme Games, it's basically just the original long box release, uh, the renamed Jewel Case, and the Grass Hits. Um, literally cheap stuff. Like you could probably buy all five for like twenty five bucks off of eBay. Alright, guys, that does it for this week. Uh, next week we'll be back with Pause Mode. Uh, if you guys, I don't see you guys sooner. Have a great New Year's. Be safe.
and have a good time. Uh, also, I want to have a huge thank you out to our 500 subscribers. Uh, we are getting new guys every week. Uh, we're almost at 28,000 views. Um, if you guys haven't checked out our Patreon page, check it out. Help support the rave. I love all of you. I hope you guys have a great year. Take care. See you next week.